As television evolves into strange new places, the regulation regime that once covered every word and inch of skin on the boob tube is letting their standards slip. Still, standards are different all around the world. An innocent friendship between a sponge and a starfish might seem fine on US TV, but that goofy camaraderie was enough to limit the broadcast of SpongeBob SquarePants to very specific hours in China. And that's just one example. Here are a few more banned episodes from popular TV shows. 201 South Park. The last episode of South Park's 14th season aired only once in the US in 2010, and even then, it was heavily censored. Their offense? They attempted to satirically address extremist outrage over the depiction of the Prophet Muhammad. Against the traitors of South Park, a warning by a radical Islamic group right here in America, right here in New York, that they will end up dead because of a cartoon. Comedy Central wasn't willing to take the risk of airing the unedited episode, already facing death threats from extremist groups, so it bleeped out any potentially offending dialogue, as well as all depictions of the prophet. Viewers were left with a whole lot of this. You see, I learned something today. Comedy Central even took it a step further and censored Matt Stone and Trey Parker's commentary on the DVD release and omitted the episode from the DVDs that would be sold in certain parts of the world. It was a particularly tough defeat for the guys known for pushing the envelope, but on the bright side, they weren't murdered for blasphemy. So, that's a plus. Boston, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. If the words 2007 Boston Moonanite Panic sounds ridiculous, it's because, well, the whole thing was ridiculous. In January of 2007, promoters of the Adult Swim show Aqua Teen Hunger Force hung light-up LED plaques in cities throughout the U.S. in order to advertise the upcoming Aqua Teen movie, which featured the Moonanites. Our vertical leap is beyond all measurement. So what you're saying is your culture is more advanced because you can jump higher? Yes, observe. While most cities were bemused, Boston went bananas and called in Homeland Security, believing the adorable plaques to be bombs. The whole incident ended up costing $2 million in fines and settlement fees, so when it came to air a parody episode a year later, Turner Broadcasting, which owns Cartoon Network and Adult Swim, refused. Turn on your tiny magnetic lights. That way, you look more like a device. There we go. While the marketing stunt ironically worked much better than they probably ever hoped for, Boston later suffered an actual very serious terrorist attack using an improvised explosive. If you're desperate to see a show that even remotely mocks anything close to either of those incidents being shown on actual television, don't hold your breath. Or just go to the internet, where people's deepest secrets and shames live on forever. Barbecuer, dial M for monkey. Cartoon Network was known for getting away with a lot of questionable content in the late 90s, including some of the most eerily terrifying moments in any kid's program. You're not perfect. In addition to giving everyone nightmares forever, Cartoon Network also ended up being responsible for a number of animated episodes that were banned after a single airing. One of the most notorious examples comes from the Dexter's Laboratory spin-off segment Dial M for Monkey. It's widely rumored that the episode called Barbecuer was banned throughout North and South America because of two characters in particular. Silver Spooner, who was created as an offensively flamboyant gay stereotype. Let the feast begin! And Crunk, who gets drunk and throws up. Both characters were probably a bit too much to appear on one episode of a show ostensibly for children. Other rumors claim that the segment was banned because of Barbecue, a parody of Marvel's Galactus, which reportedly upset the publisher. There's more credence to that second rumor, especially because the Tick animated series ran into similar problems. The 1995 episode Alone Together, which features a Galactus parody named Omnipotus, was never released on DVD for allegedly similar reasons. And we probably can't even talk in detail about why the Cow and the Chicken episode Buffalo Gals was only aired once, but it's pretty much all about lesbian stereotypes. Oh, the Buffalo Gals! A motorcycle riding gang that randomly bursts into people's homes and chews on their carpet! Wow. Elephant Issues. Tiny Toon Adventures. Banned cartoons aren't always trying to slip euphemisms through the censors. Sometimes, they're really trying to impart a positive message, just in the absolute worst way. Look, the storm knocked down that big wire. Hey, let's jump our bikes over it! The 1991 Tiny Toon Adventures episode titled Elephant Issues goes just a little overboard by murdering half of its youthful animal stars, but it's for good reason, right? Right? 
The whole episode contains two other segments about social issues, but it's the one called One Beer that got the whole thing taken off the air after just one showing. Since three underage characters get drunk in public, steal a police car, drive it off a cliff, and die. In fairness, the episode began with a warning that it was going to be addressing relevant issues. But maybe the alcohol abuse segment could have dipped its toe into areas like hangovers or job loss before diving right into the hilarious punchline of vehicular manslaughter. So do we get to do a funny episode tomorrow? I hope so. Mr. Skinny Legs, Peppa Pig. It's hard to believe the toddler show Peppa Pig is no stranger to controversy either. The cartoon character has been accused by News Corp madman Piers Ackerman of being a Marxist, Leninist, and feminist extremist. The show was also ridiculously accused of causing autism in children when many news outlets republished a satirical article from a made-up university. However, there's one example of poor Peppa being banned from television that's actually kind of justifiable. The 2012 episode Mr. Skinny Legs features the poor scene family befriending a spider with the implication that arachnids are our friends and nothing to be afraid of. It's a harmless enough message for kids in the UK, and even most of the US, but a potentially deadly message to send to children in Australia, which is home to some of the most venomous spiders in the world. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation restricted airing of the episode on its networks, but still accidentally published it online due to a technical error. Viewers quickly complained and had the episode removed, rightly terrified of Australian toddlers trying to make friends with deadly funnel web or red back spiders. Electric Soldier Porygon Pokemon Only ever airing once in Japan in 1997, Pokemon's Electric Soldier Porygon is probably the best-known band cartoon, since it actually caused a medical crisis, reportedly sending over 600 kids to the hospital. After a scene that featured a flashing strobe-like effect with multicolored lights, kids started experiencing vision problems, headaches, and nausea, with some actually having to be treated for seizures. The incident got worldwide media attention because it's not every day a TV show shocks people into a physical health emergency. Nintendo's stock shares dropped 5%, press conferences were held, and new animation guidelines were even made with medical professionals. The Cubist Electro Duck Pokemon Porygon was dropped from all future episodes, and the original episode was never aired outside of Japan. Giving kids seizures kind of makes all the Pokemon episodes banned because of guns, subtle racism, and huge inflatable breasts pale in comparison. Of course, if you think all these cartoons were banned for ridiculous reasons, just wait till you hear about the banned shows featuring actual people. 22 episodes in Mississippi, Sesame Street. Muppet and Sesame Street creator Jim Henson was born in Mississippi, and the town of Leland, Mississippi has a totally sweet public plaque declaring themselves the birthplace of universally loved frog nerd, Kermit. I love you. I love you too. Thanks. Needless to say, there's some definite hometown pride for Henson, but in 1970, the state of Mississippi actually banned Sesame Street from public television for a whopping 22 days, for probably one of the worst reasons possible. A lobbyist group spearheaded by the board former mayor of Jackson, Alan Cabot Thompson, who apparently hated all things beautiful, decided that public funds shouldn't be used to create a show with such a highly integrated cast of children. In plain English, the show was taken off the air in one state because of old-fashioned racism, and it wasn't even against blue-skinned Muppets. After a member of the commission leaked the story to the New York Times, nationwide outrage ensued and the ban was lifted. It ain't easy being green. Earshot, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. After gaining the power to hear people's thoughts, Buffy thinks she overhears a student planning a mass murder. This time tomorrow, I'll kill you all. Joke's on her. The student is just planning to commit suicide, and it's actually the lunch lady who's going to commit mass murder in a school. While that's a pretty grim storyline even for a horror comedy show, the Buffy episode Earshot probably would have made it to air if it wasn't scheduled for the week after the Columbine High School Massacre in 1999. The network pulled the episode before it aired and waited a tactful five months before showing it because that was probably enough time for anyone traumatized by the real life tragedy to handle seeing a character holding a rifle in a school's clock tower. As far as episode bans go, this one may have been unnecessarily soft. Home, The X-Files. Fun fact, the 1996 X-Files episode Home was the first network TV episode to ever earn the now ubiquitous TVMA rating. 
So it's probably not surprising that the episode rarely aired on Fox and only ever did so with a special warning. Not so fun fact. It's because the entire episode was about a deranged backwoods family who liked making babies with each other, killing people, and killing their own babies. The gruesome violence and weird sexual themes of home were, unsurprisingly for X-Files fans, reviewed very favorably. But being slapped with a mature rating from censors was enough to scare the network from ever running home again, though it did eventually reappear in syndication. It's now considered a cult classic, and some would argue the best episode in the history of the series, even though it has nothing to do with aliens, conspiracies, or anything remotely supernatural. Turns out people would rather watch inbred monsters murder a bunch of people than discover if the truth is really out there. Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.